Yo, so this video is going to quickly brush over my sort of thoughts on the 2024 changes in terms of like what you should be looking out for from a competitive standpoint. Let's not say like ultra competitive, let's say like in terms of team play because I don't want to go that far yet and the changes aren't even like super locked in so there are things that can change like i don't i wouldn't even i wouldn't be that surprised if riot were to really adjust things more you know they like they, they buff a wall by like two inches or something or something crazy like that right so this is going to be just an overall look at the general implications and like what they were going for because there's actually there's actually like a lot that's really cool here and i wanted to break down what they were going for and highlight what riot was really aiming for which eat the ch with each of the changes to make it so nice so i'm gonna ignore some of this some of this some of the changes are honestly for fun as well just to keep things fresh and I, I want to acknowledge that but there are some like really healthy changes under the hood that i think make this season's changes really exciting for a lot of players first one void grubs and void mites so these are basically taking place of the old herald like the first herald which was like the eight minute one except that these spawn even earlier so they're five minutes and they basically provide a permanent buff that increases your tower damage in the future so overall i would actually consider this when you compare it to the previous um initial herald at eight minutes it would gravitate the map a lot less and therefore uh, have less major implications on like early tower takedowns, things like that. They previously nerfed it already by just making the first Herald really trash because of the plating. Uh, but now this means that it's less volatile in the early game. And it just makes it feel a lot nicer, really smooth transition. That was kind of their idea here, right? You don't want giant gold swings because let's say enemy jungler just pulls up slaps a giant herald in front of it let's say even if you're winning lane like if he invests resources into just circumventing you and getting the first tower that way like it's kind of a feels bad moment so that's kind of the idea here and it also gives junglers something else to do in the meantime and they pushed it even earlier but to five minutes so really really cool change i would say in addition they changed the second herald to be drivable so no license required but this thing can drift and it wants you to drift because if you drive it, I believe it does more damage than if you don't. So very interesting change. I don't think gameplay wise it changes much about like the point of Herald. It's just honestly cool. That's it. So I don't want to go too deep into that. Um, the other implication is I believe these are the void changes at the, when Baron spawns and they wanted to feel the implication of Baron, right? So look at this. We've got Baron empowered red, Baron empowered blue and crab. And now the big change, I believe, is, well, one, the minor one is that they are tankier at this phase, but also, in the case of the blue and the red buff, they grant buffs to the entire team now, which is kind of insane. This is something that it's kind of like, oh yeah, that's cool on the surface, but the point of this is that it basically introduces a mini objective. Because if you think about the game right now, it's not very important to like and especially in the late game it's to grab buffs it's just kind of one of those things where you're like oh yeah, yeah, yeah blue mid laner can grab blue on the way over to the fighting for dragon or something like that right now you're fighting for the blue potentially the point of this is to push up the priority of these buffs because they're actually mini objectives now so you're going to invest resources into getting vision around blue around red in the late game you want to fight for it especially with like if you're a team that's like pretty mana heavy or something like that by coincidence and you just really benefit from it that's going to be super sick um even in case of the crab it's going to send a huge scryer's bloom like it's like i think i think it's a little bit less impactful although crab was already more impactful in the late game to begin with but you see what i mean here they're creating more things to fight for throughout the map at all stages of the game which is really cool you might have noticed in some competitive games before it was kind of just like a bounce back between baron and drag baron and drag but and then there's going to be these like down times of like two to three minutes but with this change it create it constantly creates different variety different things that you're fighting for and different in the case of baron now which is a good transition different conditions in which you can play out these objectives which is which is super cool right so look at Baron, look at, look at that glow up, or I don't know, glow down, I guess, because he's looking a little mean right now. But with Baron, with the three map changes, it's not like a huge change unless you like roll this one. But the other two especially, 
So like this is the normal one, and this is the one with like the small wall. It kind of changes how you're supposed to approach Baron, right? Like your objective control and like the amount it takes is going to be a little bit different. So let's say I think the most apparent one is probably the case with this one, which is just an open river. This basically increases the variance and coin flip of Baron, right? You have to, and this will generally, from first glance, it's generally going to favor teams that are a little bit more behind because there's more area for um, teams to play around, both teams rather. So you, so let's say even if one team can control like a bunch of the Baron pit, you can still kind of walk in really easily, right? So basically this Baron pit, the idea here is it dilutes the power of vision control on Baron because you can still actually walk in versus old Baron. It's like, you kind of have to walk all the way around. You, the one team, if a team has like a chokehold on like certain points in the map and they have a vision control, it's hard to kind of just like sneak your way in. So it's, it changes how these objectives are important and what you can, how, how risky it is to play for them. And that's a really cool thing. The other really interesting thing, I'm not sure if it's cool yet because it's still pending the change is the map change here. So. There's a lot to break down in terms of the walls and stuff. So let's talk about the, f the first one here, which is this curvy wall now. So basically, I would say, at least from what I see, it kind of makes it safer for top lane because this cuts off a gank angle, right? In addition, by pushing the bush back and pushing it into towards the center, it also nerfs the viability of ganks because the you're going to see it from a mile away now right so let's say you're playing you're playing blue side here or rather sorry you're playing red side here and you can overextend a little more easily now let's say you're renekton or something and you want to you want to really get in there it enemy jungler can't go like this now anymore he can he could go like this and it's still decent but it's not as strong as before for sure like it's not a full flank like it used to be plus his bush does not like it will basically it will it will make it will intuitively force players to ward here and make a center point for people to contest vision over, and then you can just fight. And then you will know when the ganks happen and you can, you, it's basically like having good fundamentals matters like slightly less if you want to take risks and stuff. This is a weird in, like inherent nerf to jungle, I guess, because like if you're nerfing jungle ganks, you're basically nerfing jungle. So I'm curious as to what they're going to do with that, about that, as the jungle meta is already kind of like a full clear meta. So like if you're nerfing ganks again, are you going to like, Push it even further so that's something i'm watching out for i don't i don't want like another full clear turbo just cycle camp meta right or maybe the the increase of objectives kind of increases the variance like maybe riot wants junglers to not be focused just around ganking it could be like they're kind of like a different laner but they're in the woods they're just scrapping for stuff right because they have those void mites like on second clear you're already fighting for it so th that could be something to play for like they like objectives right there's all these walls um, this, I think is to prevent counter jungling, as they mentioned here, but I think this is a change that you'd have to feel out in order to understand whether it's actually useful. Cause there's some junglers that can probably still go over it and they're still, they're still probably balancing it around that. Like J4 can go over, I'm not sure if Graves can go over this. It's looking pretty fat though. Like Graves could potentially like walk in through this side or, you know, there, there are probably some jungle, like I'm sure Lee could still ward hop this. But, you know, the idea is there, and they're changing up control. It also changes up the control over Dragon as well, by the way, because this is one less entrance. You can only go from flanks, so teams that are controlling this area, especially if you're a blue side, it kind of changes what areas you're watching. And wards here are very, very important now. The pushback here, it's simple enough. You just basically reduce the viability of ganks on mid, getting ganked from side. Honestly, it was already kind of hard to gank from side here, so it's not like significant, but it does help. Now, especially at lower brackets. Bot lane is kind of similar to top lane in terms of changes. They just push the bush here. So everybody, the ganks are just going to get weaker. And that's pretty much most of the map changes, I would say. Um, there's also a lot of like item changes, but I don't really want to touch on those right now because out of everything here, these are probably the most likely to change. Um, and I don't really know. I don't, really, I don't really want to talk about it until it's locked in. So we'll focus on the map stuff, but basically Riot is trying to stabilize the early game, make every stage impactful, and just make it just make it a feels good. Improve the QOL for players at all stages, right? Early game, you're not gonna die randomly as much, it's not frustrating. 
like you have a lot of objectives you're playing for so it's it's a more of like a team play focus you know there's more variance in baron maybe you could roll a cool baron um you know you're mo you're more focused on moving on ar around the map and just playing and fighting for things versus like just getting cucked by a bunch of things they 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 want to remove this variance this this feels bad moment when you like at least like, i call it a takeaway mechanic right where they're kind of circumventing the idea that players can get shut down and it feels really bad for players when they do so they they're trying to cut down on this and for the average player it's going to make this re feel really fun and my only concern would be to see if this dulls out the experience a bit because if like there's no kills or something like that if it's all based on laners and stuff like i, I am not actually sure so we'll have to see there's still some things like lane ganking and you know they, i'm sure teams can get creative with stuff but that's basically the idea of the changes and i just wanted to highlight that this game as well uh, i love this blue and red stuff but anyways hopefully this makes sense to you all and yeah looking forward to the new season so i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers